Facebook? Yes, that one. So go to the page one, the next page. This one? No, so, no, again, go to the next one because is, you put is, one. one. Yeah, no, no, you put, okay, the other one, the next one. One B. This one. Okay, that one, yes. Why you replace replace this 0 0.75 y 5 y s x by the MR? Because that's equal to MR. <laughs> okay, that's thank you. That's it. So, is it always the is equal to MR? Is equal to MR. Look. So, always is equal to MR? Yeah. Let me show you. Okay. Look, this is chapter three, page five. All right? Mm -hmm. Chapter three. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Oh. Okay. You will remain. Yes. You will remember this for the rest of your life. Oh yes, MR is there. So I okay. Uh, <laughs> That's it. Oh, right. we read. To start, I just uh, want to go back to this. So we only had 26 of you today. Maybe traffic is bad or I, I really have no idea. However, I want to mention that this is the last time that we're going to see each other, hopefully, last time in this course but uh, i want to wish you a, a happy summer and that you find the job that you want and also um today or tomorrow there is a folder called scholarships i'm gonna put information about the eisenhower scholarship the eisenhower is one of the best that we have because sometimes I give you ten thousand dollars uh, per year and a trip to Washington. I really don't know if you want to go to Washington or, or take a trip, but it is a very good scholarship for people interested in transportation. But everything that we do in civil is related to transportation. So I'm going to put that information about scholarship. And I think that you need three letters of recommendation and, and you do need to move fast because it is a, a, a the deadline is approaching very fast. So it's called the Eisenhower Scholarship, and I will upload it later. I want to talk about the final exam. You know that it's on Monday at 11 o'clock. Make sure that you are there on time. And you work. And I just want you to read number two again, because I told you before that we do have the technology. And even though that you believe that I don't know why you did, I do know exactly why you did. I strongly recommend you don't do it again because I'm not going to say anything, but your final grade is going to reflect this. Believe me that we do have the technology. Don't do it again because your final grade will reflect this. I know exactly and I can tell you the names and everything, but I'm not going to do anything. Don't do it again. At 11 o'clock, the first question, you can download it. I'm going to put also the first question in the screen for about 10 minutes. And you have until 10 after 12 to upload it. Do not send it to me. Do not send it to me. And people that finish earlier than 10 after 12, at 12 o'clock, you can download question number two. And the exam officially ends at, at 12. I'm going to give until 1 o'clock to upload the second question. And um, don't send it to me. The, the second question and the first question, they're going to come with a hint just to help. So they are not difficult, but every, every time that I say it's not difficult, that I was difficult. Right? But read the problem carefully. Read the problem. Careful. 
Any question before I go into the final lecture? Okay, and there is no question. I'm gonna go over a, a review of everything that is in the code because as, as you just heard or saw, um, a, the question that he asked me is a good question because before the exam, I need to tell you where everything is. So just in case, I know that some of you will find this board, but everything that you need to know about columns is given in chapter e the chapter e deal with any type of column the standard collections all of them they are in chapter one you can use this for every section in chapter one also as you did in exam number two you can use, turn the microphone off, please. So the same that you did in exam number two, you can use this equation to find the critical stress. However, all of this, as you know now by heart, this is inelastic behavior and the other one is elastic behavior. All of that is based, this l to c you know by now that this is KL, KL over R. And I put it in here, probably you also have it in your code. So everything that can be computed by using this equation, they are at the end of chapter four. And I'm telling you this because some people are still asking me where do you get this, right? So I need to take care of the poor in, in class the one that need the help. So remember, but only 35, 36, 46, 50, 65, and 70. During the exam, make sure that you read what type of steel and use it. So if this, if the steel is not in this table, you still can use the equations in chapter E because all of this was built by using the equations in chapter E and had nothing to do with the strong or the weak axis. This is KL over R, the largest one is the critical. Nothing to do in weak axis or strong axis is controlling the design. Only had to do with the KL over R. In addition, like you did in the exam, you have to check for local parking. And local parking, you go to chapter B. And in chapter B, there are tables that apply to a column. Right? This table is, turn the uh, microphone off. Please. This table is for columns. And you can see how you got this run in the previous exam. You need to look at this little sketch and see that in this case is B over two. This is 50% of the flank. But don't get confused with the table. In addition, if you have local backing problem, you go to E7. E7, as you also know, is 16.142. And E7 also send you to E4. But if there is no local backlink, you don't have to use them. In the exam, there was no local backlink, and people were still using this because you following example. Since it's open book, open notes, everything is open, make sure that if you following an example, make sure that they are very similar because most of the time they are different. So everything that deal with column is in chapter. E is in, in, at the end of chapter four, and also the table B for column. So everything related to column, chapter E, end of chapter four, and chapter B. 
Everything related to B is in the next chapter in F. And these are the limit state. Geolim doesn't happen that often, but that one we can read the plus reach the plastic mode. The most common, as you can see, is where you embrace land is larger than L sub P, is more than L sub R. We have lateral torsional backlink. And this is when we use the C sub B that I always want you to compute. And this in here, 0.7 FYSX, is M sub R. And one of the worst mistakes and I don't know how many times I mentioned that to you, and I mentioned that to people in the past. This in here is the critical stress when L sub B is larger than L sub R. It was one of the homework problems that we had this. And so this critical stress comes from here, does not come from the end of chapter four. Chapter four is for columns. This is for bending. This is the elastic modulus. So this is for bending. So this comes from here. But all the information that you need in here is given in chapter one with a section of this value that is a summation one third of BTQ. So this is for beam. So we cannot, we will not use, if you have to, we will not use chapter four. You have to do this. And I also mentioned to you before that in the next page, on page 16.148, we had an equation for L sub P and L sub Y. For any standard section, we go to table ZX in chapter three. We do not have to compute it by using this equation. I know that you did it last semester. This semester, you don't have to compute. If this is a standard section, you just get the L sub P and L sub R here. The only thing that we had in some of our example, is whenever we had, and this is the next page, 16.149. Whenever we had a section that had a um, problem with the flanges, immediately we're going to find the lambda. And this is very similar to what we had in the previous equation, but it based on the lambda. If lambda is larger than the lambda sub P is more than lambda sub R, this is the equation that we use. The only thing that changes is these values. Instead of the L sub B, L sub P, we use the lambda. And this means for the flange. Of course, it has to be smaller. There's no way they're going to be equal or larger than M sub P. And whenever we had a section that with a slender flange, the lambda is larger than, and this should be lambda sub R. And uh, this is the equation that controls our design. But we have to check always. Uh, wait a minute. So we always need to check, always need to check lateral torsional backlink whenever we had a problem with the flange, local backlink or the flange, we have to check lateral torsional backlink because sometimes, even though that you have a problem with the flange, lateral torsional backlink to control. And there's a question from the record. We have to use for this only ZX. Where? What are you talking about where ZX? For which equation? The first the first one, yes. the equation F to six. F to six. For this equation? For this equation? F to six for the equation F to six. F to six. Okay. Yes. Yes.
What do you mean? What do you mean Z action here? Do we have to compete here or you have to go to the table for ZX? Okay, yes, turn, turn your microphone off. Me. You hear me? I hear you. Turn, turn that microphone off. Look, <laughs> let me repeat it again. Last semester, last semester, no, this semester, you had to compute this by using this equation. This semester, you don't have to. If this is a standard section, we're going to get this L sub P and L sub R from table ZX in chapter 3. Right? You don't have to compute it. Only when you have a section that is non-standard section, you have to compute it because they are not given in chapter 3. Right? So, uh, uh, well, Caleb, well, okay, uh, any, any, I need three or four of you. Is this clear? What I'm asking you to do this semester? Tell me yes, one, yes, yeah, okay. Um, very good. It, the, uh, is that clear now? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. I'll turn your microphone off. Okay. All right. There's another question from Caleb. Is is there a possibility that you will give us a build that shape for being problem or, or we won't have enough time for that? The exam has been designed for you to have plenty of time to solve the problem. I saw I already solved the problem. You never believe me how long it takes me, but it should not take you that long. I always put a factor of three or four times what it will take you that it usually takes me to solve the problem. But the point that I wanted to make, that if the standard is, the section is a standard section, you go to chapter three, Table CX and you find this one. But if you have a section that is non standard, like the question in exam number two, you have to compute it. You have to compute this value. And sometimes this is the only value that you have to compute because you embrace land is smaller than this value. But if you embrace land is larger than this value, you have to compute both. Any other questions? So, we are dealing with beams uh, from Celeste, larger than what value? Well, look, this is L sub P and this is L sub R, right? And just forget about the formula. I'm gonna go to the previous page. This is what I'm saying. Right? Look. Where L sub B, you embrace land is more than or equal to L sub P, lateral torsion of backlink doesn't apply. This is what I'm Whenever you embrace land is larger than L sub P and L to R, this is the equation that applies. So if I'm computing, if I have a section that is non-standard, and I go to the next page, and I compute L sub P, or non-standard section, because it's very easy, 1.76, only R sub Y. That's already computed, because you know the moment inertia, you know the area. So this is very easy. If it happened that you embrace land. Is it smaller than this value? We are here, right? Whenever it's larger than that value, we are in here. You see, Celeste? This is larger than this. More now, whenever it's larger than this value, we go to here. 
This is the equation that control log. It also be learning that's the equation that control. This is the equation that I'm telling you, be careful with this critical stress. Good question. Any other question? About it. If it's only one. Okay, yeah, don't worry. Now, C sub is only computers uh, formal one to reaffirm what you already know. And the answer is yes, because I'm going to go to the weak axis whenever, look, the code has everything in one chapter, has everything that is related to that chapter. And whenever there is something that is unclear, you have to go to the commentary. So I'm going to go to this chapter. And just to reaffirm why you already know. I, I, I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to uh, bore you. Look, F6, I shape members and channels bend about the minor. The only limited stage that we have is yielding and flange local back. Because there's no way that you have no lateral torsional backing. Because bending is about the weak axis, completely different than the strong axis. The compression flange is not going to back or out of place. So whenever we had bending about the weak axis, like you did for your homework problem that you today at midnight, we only had the possibility of yielding. And so the nominal capacity to be equal to M sub P, but it had to be smaller than 1.6 A1. So this is a, a, a good question to refer your memory. So only for bending about the strong axis, we had lateral torsion. Any, any question? Any other question? Feel free. Is your, maybe your last opportunity. So chapter F, also go with chapter B, that don't get confused with this table, because this table is for bending, and this is the 41B, and this is the lambda, this in here I ask you to put, this is lambda, this is lambda sub P, this is lambda sub R, then here where we get the value of lambda. Also, this chapter goes with chapter three. So, it, you look at this, this is a, a very, a very important uh, figure. Because in here, I tell you, M sub B, flat. And this dot is L sub P. This dot in here is L sub R. And this is a, a linear equation. Larger than L sub R, we had a parabola. Look, whenever we had a non-compact, right? Whenever we had a, this is the value that we had to convert. Instead of L sub P, we had L sub prime P. But if our value, if our value based on lateral torsional backlink is where I have my arrowhead, this one control. So, so you have to be whenever our lateral torsional backlink is in here, this one will control. So this is a very, a very good thing. And also, of course, you know by heart, table ZX. And this table, only good for 50. If I had in my program something different than 50, I cannot use this table. So that means that I have to compute L to P and L to R if this is different than 50, understand? All of this is for a value of 50. And 
whenever you are not sure, go back to the original equation because L sub P and L sub R were computed by using the equation that we've seen before. I'm gonna go back to that equation. And look, most of you are in your first uh, senior year or your second junior year. There's at least one of you in this semester. And it's not my fault that you were in this semester. But anyway, you look at the original equation. Whenever you had something that is different than the 50 that says on the top, and you can see in here is the Fy. You can see in here the Fy, but these are non-linear. Non so you have to compute it. You look, whenever you find something that is different, you need to go to the original equation and look at the equation and make your decision if you can use those values or you can't. So look at the equation, you go back. To this table, right? And so you can see that L sub P and L sub R, if you have 65, you need to use the, ori the original equation to compute this. So don't forget that you have to use the original equation to compute this value. But what about the M sub P and M sub R? You can see that M sub P is a linear equation. So from Colette, if we had the flexion limit when designing is going to find I M. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever whenever they uh, and this is a different different question. Nothing to do with this right now. Um he's asking about the deflection. Whenever there is a deflection um question. If you had enough information, and normally you do, because the only thing that you need is the deflection formula. So you go to the end of this chapter. And you had a formula for the deflection. So based, based on the information that you have, if you have enough information in this particular problem, you are able to compute the deflection. The only thing, the only thing that you need to find is I, I sub X. And so you look at a formula and ask yourself the question, do I have enough information to compute my deflection? If I do, I go to this table, find the equation for the deflection, and compute I sub X. With I sub X, so the only unknown in your equation is going to be I sub X. With I sub X, you go to the table for I sub X, <laughs> table 3-3. And <laughs> my question to you is, is does I sub X depends on the grade of the steel that we are using? Or does it depend on the type of steel? It doesn't depend because it's just property of the cross-section, geometry. So you come to this table. Let's say that you need 1900. The lightest, the best section, the one on the top, you're going to select a W24 by 76. And after that, you continue with the problem. So going back to this, oh, I was saying if you have something different than 50, you have to go to chapter F and compute L to P and L to R. And what about M to P and M to R? I was showing it to you in here. N sub P is a linear equation. 
So the only thing that we need to do, the value in table CX, we're going to multiply by the new FY and divide it by 50. So you can use that by multiplying by the new FY and divide by 50. This one in here also is a, a linear equation. The only thing that you're going to do in here is multiplied by the new FY and divided by 50. So you can use this value. So in this table, again, so L sub P and L sub R need to be computed. P, N sub P, P, N sub R, linear equation. Now let's look at uh, the shear, the shear from here, P, B, swing. Shear in chapter G. So here in chapter G, and you come and look at this equation in here. And if you look at this equation, also depends on Fy. So you can divide it by 50 and multiply it by the next Fy. But you have to be careful just with here on the top. Because in, in this case, P is one and, and this value is one. There are certain cases that you have to be careful with this value. But in general, it's a linear equation. Uh, I have a question about uh, for P1, do we use moment inertia? Okay, all right. And uh, this question comes from, from um, Ali. According to the moment, that's the only. Okay. Ali is, is in Kuwait, uh, in prison right now. He, he cannot leave his house, right? So, so he's asking me this because the, in the old exams, if you if you have had the opportunity to look at the old exams, what we used to do, this formula in here, the I, if you remember, So this formula for the real generation is the square root of IAX over the gross area. I'm going to, uh, Edgardo, just, just uh, <laughs> let me answer the first question. I'm going to square both sides. So I'm going to have RX squared equal to IAX over the gross area, right? I'm going to square and dot. Uh, two sides. So now I'm going to put IX equal to R squared times the gross area. Huh? IX equal to R squared times the gross area. Now I'm going to copy the formula in here.
So this is this is the formula, uh, and this in here is a L S. So again, again, we started with a radius of generation. We square both sides. So I have ix as a function of r squared. I'm going to replace ix in here. So this is going to be equal to i squared e, e r squared times those area over k l x squared. Right? So now I'm going to send this r squared to the bottom. And this is pi squared e cross area over k l x over r to x squared. So this is a different way of writing this formula. So whenever we have the formula written in this way, we had the gross area and we had k l over r x squared. So in the old times, in the the uh, old exam, old homework problem, we used to do this. So we use the gross area, and instead of using KLX squared, we use KL over RX squared. Now, is this formula and this formula, are they the, the same? Right. This formula in here, yeah, 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 exactly the same. Uh, but this was the way we used to do it in the past because we already had this computation when the strong axis control. But this is exactly the same. Whenever you go to the old exams, we had this form. This year, I'm using to be consistent with everything in the textbook and using this. Exactly the same. Ali. 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 Do you. Okay, okay, good. Okay, now we have another question from Edgardo. When do we check for shear? This is uh, an advice for the rest of your life. You will. Whenever we are doing a design, whenever we design it, a beam, we always need to check three things. One is bending, or what we call flexion. In the code, that is a chapter F. Also, we need to check the shear because shear and shear and stresses could control our design. Normally, it doesn't, but we're supposed to check the shear because it could control your design. And the shear and stresses are very difficult. Mechanical solids at underground level, nobody understands that. And they're so difficult because the shear and stress distribution is different depending on the shape of the cross section uh, shape of your beam. So we always compute bending, chapter F in the code. We always compute shear, chapter G, and we always compute deflection because sometimes, and Bending and shear in general is called strength. We're checking the strength of our member. But performance is a problem that is related to the deflection. So in this course, whenever I want you to check everything, but everything for a beam, it means bending, shear, and deflection. I would say check everything. And Sometimes I will give you, sometimes I will give you the deflection limitation or the limit L over 360, L over 240. 
And so you have to read the question, the question carefully for the exam. But in the future, for your life, always check bending, shear, and deflection. For column, that was from uh, now there's another question from Adrian Ibar. For comb, you said you work. For combs uh, with non-compact or slender, we use E7. This is back to E4. If I have a but how did that, that convert to F6? I mean, to many F. Alex? What? Alex? Analyze is, uh, yeah, in, in different parts. But you, could you explain again like what it means? Uh, and and Iber, and listening, what they're talking about. Is that you, Mariana? Okay. Well, we don't want to know what you're talking about. So let's talk about it. So, oh man, <laughs> for column we not come by the use E7, that's the four to the poor FE, but how that we convert to FE? So, for column we had to compute the critical um stress so whenever whenever we had um local buckling the code required you to check the critical the critical stress by using this equation assuming there is no local buckling and compare it with the local back so we have to do it this way and after that we go to chapter f set to e7 sir So here, there is the critical, the critical stress. Look, this critical stress in here is computed in accordance with E3 or E4 for single angles or whatever. So talking about F critical, so we go to E4. And so in here, the value, um, the value of the critical, the critical stress is the effective stress that goes in here. And so you compare this with the previous. One. All right. So another question uh, from Moises. Well, um, we said, is the best shape for being colon the lightest one and the one that gives a solution from H1 closer to one? Yes. Whenever I'm going to go to the equation H1. So what I mean with that with another question when table six two we can use either a brain length or K or what? Uh, table six two we can use either a brain length or K or what. Okay. Yes a minute. Let's let me answer the question. If if the the we do is related to what we supposed to have learned in the past. And then some of you will continue into a master degree program. Some of you will not, um, and doesn't matter what you decide. But finally, finally, when you go to the grad school, if you do, or when you start reading the old books, the light is gonna appear to you and you're gonna understand why they're doing this. This is related to like I mentioned before, the state or stresses at a point. 
mechanical soldering is one of the most important courses in your career. Or you didn't know that, but we're going to figure that out later. So in there, we consider all the different type of forces that produce normal stresses. And axial forces produce normal stresses as force divided by the area. Bending moment produces axial stresses, MC over I. So what this means is that for any cross-section, 100% of the capacity, because we cannot use more than 100%, is based on how much is used by normal stresses produced by the axial load, how much is used by stress and normal stresses produced by the moment about the strong axis, and how much produced by the moment about the y axis. So the closer, the closer we are to one, the best, the best section in a family, in a group. Because sometimes, because of how the sections are fabricated, in certain group, 0.85 would be the best one in that group. But in the other group, it could be 0.9, the best one. But in our case, in our case, in this course, we're going to get the lightest one, the lightest one of, of whatever we do. And the lightest one, like I did yesterday, I think it gave me 0.86 or 0.8 something, right? So that means that we cannot use, we cannot use the rest in that case because we only had moments about this, a certain magnitude of all the strong acts. But whenever we solving a problem that has a beam column, we're going to do our best to try to get equal to one. That's why one of the problems that I saw, I think yesterday, that they were asking what is the maximum factor low W to U that could be used, I made this equal to one, and I got the maximum load that can be. And that is, that is the answer, the long-winded answer. I'm sorry, Moises, but that's it. Moises, you need more? Yes, sir. Uh, wait, uh, Edgar. Uh, now, Edgar, I don't know if there are two Edgar, <laughs> but uh, why we can use either a bracelet or KL1? This table, <laughs> I'm gonna go and, and talk about this after I'm gonna answer the question. Look, you see, in here, this it says that it could go with uh, L to C in feet with respect to RY or L to B with respect to the strong axis. Because in here, they are assuming that weak axis control. So whenever we have the weak axis control, we're going to have, you're going to see that most of the time, L to B and L to C, they're going to be exactly the same. That's why this table gives you such a good value, because they're assuming that weak axis control. Whenever we had a strong axis control, we had a problem. So this is when really for the problems L to C and L to B, they're exactly the same. And that is the reason. Now, another question, H1 control and H1A control close to 0.95. Let me ask you this question. This is a really interesting question. Um, I want the class to help me. Is there any way that I can use equation H11A and H11B at the same time? No, because it depends on this value. So if you're using both equations at the same time, it's impossible. You're doing that. You need to check something because 
whenever this ratio of the axial low over a fee piece to n larger than two, H11A control. It's smaller, H11B the, uh, That was Edgar, Edgardo Hernandez. Edgardo, that did answer your question. Don't know what, so what, what are you asking? No, so tell me what are you asking? From a, after the colon action. Well, oh, after after the colon action, you find a new fee piece in. After the colon action. How are we gonna find and yeah, look, you do the column first. You you do the column first. So you do phi piece uh, piece with you or phi piece with it. And this ratio is gonna tell you which equation is controlling your design, right? When you checking or you are designing based on L to B or, or K, L, Y, depending on any section, any section that you have, you're going to be able to find phi, P to N. And if you have P to U, you know exactly which equation control, H11A and H11B, whenever you're checking or design. Okay, so there's something here. And that's no one I can after call on action you find new VP when the only the only time that we find a new VP to N is whenever this whenever you use this equation or that equation larger than one. If you have this equation control larger than one, we have to find a different phi piece to n. This equation control larger than one, you have to find a different phi piece to n and different phi m to n. Uh, what else? What else? Okay, what else? Please, sir, don't forget to pause the last one. Today, you talking about the, the homework that we do last week? Is that what you're talking about? Homo. No. Well, I cannot post the one that is due today because it is due at 11.59. So I will post that tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. What else? Okay. Uh, uh, from Isa. I was a few minutes late to class in the morning. Could you please repeat what you said in the beginning about what they will? Well, seeing see, see you, seeing what they will, well, what they will we can use in the final. Seeing see you were late. And I don't, I don't know why somebody can be late. It is online. Just the traffic cannot be that bad. Um, look, something that I do want to emphasize, and I did at the beginning of the lecture, right? Is number two. Number two, you do have to be very careful with it. I don't want you to find surprises when you get you final grade. So, do your own work. We do have the technology to find out what you do. Now, the table, the table, the only thing that I've done, I've gone to chapter E, chapter F, and chapter uh, H, and chapter G, and appendix A. So I, I have done a summary of everything that we have done. For instance, a table that you can use, tables at the end of chapter four. You go with L over R, 
you find the critical stress. Demo that you can use, demo for ZX in chapter three. All the information in chapter one, you can use. Everything that I done, that uh, table that I use during the lecture, you can use. What table are you specifically asking? What, what table you want to know? I said. Definitely, definitely because the tables at the end of, of chapter four, they are based on equations on chapter E. But also I said that if the FY that you had in the exam is not in the table at the end of chapter four, you have to use the equations in chapter E because those are not linear values. Any other question? Okay, any other question? All right. Listen, I'm available every single day. If you need help, I just want to wish you good luck uh, in the exam. And uh, I just want to emphasize that this is a, 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 a very hard time for everybody, a difficult, very difficult the courses online. It's very difficult learning, but also it's a great opportunity for you to show what you're going to be doing in the future. And, and in the future, I had a student that they were cheating on, on taxes, cheating the wife. So this is going to be a great responsibility. You, in front of your son, doing the work yourself. And I, I trust you. I don't know if I should, but I trust you. You do the right thing. Well, good luck, and I see you whenever you need me. But definitely, we had an appointment. Be early, like for instance, Isaac, that you were late. I don't know what. Don't be late for the exam. So make sure that you are there before eleven o'clock on Monday. All right. Bye bye.